Idris Musa. I'm a director of innovation and ICT at Planning for Africa. We are very proud and uh, honored to have you here today, Excellency. Excellency, I'm, I'm sure you're very familiar to this because you commissioned one of these at, uh, in Ghana, in the Eastern Province. And this is our famous, famous rural stop. Excellency, thank you. It's because of your passion, commitment, and determination in bringing connectivity to each and every Ghana, and especially for those in rural areas, that this was born. Because of the passion and commitment that you have given in digitalization of Ghana, and Huawei poised of better, effective, and yet less cost, costly technology can come with this innovation. So today we are proud to tell the world this product innovation is born in Ghana, and excellence was a proud fan. Thank you. <laughs> this infrastructure has changed the way they live. They can communicate today. They can send what from, they can make phone calls, and above all, they can make business transactions. We know that 95% of rural coverage is your target. We can make it 100. You have that will, Excellency. And as the old saying goes, where there is a will, there is a will. transactions. It's now opened up access to government services. So if this lady requires to do an application to get some service from the government, press that and the applications available on online services is available. If a form needs to be filled in, it will give me an actual form. I fill it in, I place it in here, it will automatically scan it and pass it to the government agency for dealing with it. If there is a payment, I can make a payment. If we need a copy of a license or a permit, I can get an actual copy of the detail. Everything I could do by speaking to a government official, I could do through this kiosk, which can now be connected by our broadband services to anywhere in your country to make government services more widely available to all your citizens so they access it, be able to do things, and for you to be able to provide better public services to your citizens. So, producing authorised national identity cards with biometrics in order that I can improve the connectivity and identification of our citizens. I can take this to the citizen rather than the citizen having to come to me in government services. The Ghanaian community who have come all over from China to welcome you. The Ghanaian community in China is a fast growing community. And I must say, we are one of the more um, 
acquitted Ghanaians, where right now we have the highest number of African students in China. At last count, we had almost 7,000 students studying in China. We also have amongst us seasoned entrepreneurs who are contributing positively towards the economy of China and also our economy back home. We are very, very pleased that you've taken time off your very hectic and jam-packed schedule to be with us this evening. Wherever I go, I do my best to touch base with the Ghanaian community to do exactly what we're going to be doing this evening, exchange information that you know what we're trying to do back home, how far we've got, and also to hear your preoccupations. The situation at home, the 18 months that we have been in office have not been easy, largely because of the inheritance that we had, very little money, and many things in disarray. If you will remember, take your minds back about the state of our economy when we took office. You'll understand the difficulties that were in the way of the government. I say this not by way of a complaint, because we had a very good idea that things were not in a good state when we came. But I state it just to give you the background to some of the actions we've had to take to begin to revive the Ghanaian economy. And I think that any objective observer would say that those measures have been, by and large, have been successful. A 3.6% rate of growth was translated last year to an 8.5% rate of growth. And this year, all the projections are that we will repeat that same rate of growth for the year 2018. So two years in succession, we'll be seeing relatively high rates of growth. In my view, we need to increase it even more if we're going to go over the hump and then get into the process of self-sustaining development. But you have to begin from somewhere. The issues to do with the deficit are being more or less addressed. A 73% fiscal deficit, debt to GDP ratio went down to 68%. Rates of inflation have gone down. Generally, the macroeconomy of Ghana has improved, has improved significantly. And that's why we're now beginning to see significant investments in our economy. The last and most famous one, the celebrated one that is being talked about at home, of course, is the decision of Volkswagen to set, to set up an assembly plant in Ghana. And Ghana has been chosen because they see that the macroeconomy of Ghana is beginning to make a lot of sense. So, considerable improvements have been made in the manner in which the economy has been managed, which is now beginning to get us an economy that people are talking about. And that's the first stage to attracting investments, putting your own house in order, such that people will have the confidence to put their money in your economy. This phenomenon of Galamse has meant the devastation of large tracts of Ghanaian land. A landscape in many, many areas become very ugly because of this indiscriminate exploitation of, of, of the lands. Some of them going deep into forest reserves. As situations people go and dig in forests at midnight, hoping to escape the scrutiny of the law enforcement agencies. And they have active support and connivance, or even of officials on the ground. Our water bodies across the country, you drive through Ghana, the Ancobra, the this, the this, the Ajimbi, Numbrim, you can't do Numbrim anymore. The brain is now a dirty track of water. There is no future if we continue down that road. And together we have to stop it. Unfortunately for us, again, there are foreigners who are praying and acting in this area. Some of them come from here. 
my meeting with the President Xi Jinping yesterday, I said it to him quite frankly that um, we have this situation and there are many of his compatriots who are involved in this exercise. And I want him to understand that when the law enforcement agencies in Ghana act against them, we're not acting against Chinese. There's no anti-Chinese policy in Ghana. We don't have any hatred or dislike or anything. On the contrary, we've welcomed Chinese investment in our, in our economy. China today is the largest trading partner of Ghana. We've changed some fundamental statistics. The old days where it was our former colonial powers that had the monopoly of our trade has gone. Today, China is our largest trading partner. China has made very important, significant uh, contributions to the development of our infrastructure and to the growth of our economy. So we can have no quarrel with Chinese presence in Ghana, and we don't. But we do have a quarrel with those who will get involved in this illegal mining. And now, as far as that is concerned, I don't intend to have to, to I no curve, no bend. I'm not changing my mind about this fight against the gangs. So, yeah. so, so yesterday in our discussions, I did bring it up, and he himself was the first to recognize that yes, uh, Ghanaian laws have every right to deal with people who are involved in illegal activities. And he would be the first to recognize our right to deal. Obviously, he would, he would, what was of concern to him is that those Chinese in our country who had legitimate rights, who were going about their businesses lawfully, would, would, would require the protection of Ghanaian law. I don't have any difficulty about that. And that is the way it should be. People come to your country. They respect your laws. They do their business in, in, a, in, a, in the correct manner. Your, your duty is to protect them and allow them to be able to carry out their business. But those who infringe your own domestic legislation, those cannot be permitted to get away with it. And that was a statement that I was very happy about the manner in which he responded and, and the, the assurance that he gave that those of his compatriots who were engaged in this illegal mining activity would not find any support in him or in his government. Um, there were those before I came who were saying um, I should be careful about raising the subject. Say, hey, how can I be careful about raising a subject of concern to me? I cannot be careful. I can't be careful about raising a matter that concerns the interests of my people. I cannot be. Otherwise, I'll be, I'll be violating my own oath of office. So, 